Presenting the Domestic Air Source Heat Pump Water Heater from VGuard. Bringing you hot water, using the heat from the atmosphere. Contributing to a greener environment. VGuard Domestic Air Source Heat Pump Water Heaters. Your source for energy efficient and eco-friendly hot water throughout the year. In this video, we'll walk you through its step-by-step -step installation process. The domestic air source heat pump water heater comes in two boxes like these. Let's first unbox the heat pump. Inside, you will find the heat pump as well as its accessories, such as the copper pipes, user manual, the controller, its wires, and tubes such as the drain pipe. This is the heat pump. At the back of the heat pump is a cardboard sheet like this. Keep it here until the installation is complete. Next, we will unbox the storage tank. You will find its accessories stored on the sides, such as the coupler, drain pipe, support frame, expansion bolts, screws, water tank fixing strap, Take off all the packaging materials. Select an appropriate location. Place the storage tank on a stable platform. Identify spots for the support frame. Ensure the position using a water level. Drill holes and insert the expansion bolts. Position the storage tank. Place the support frame into bolts and tighten them in place. Place the water tank fixing strap. Use the provided nuts and bolts to tighten it in place. This will prevent unnecessary movements. Leave sufficient clearance around the unit for proper airflow and maintenance access. The distance between heat pump and the storage tank should be less than 1.5 meters. Take the four damping blocks from the accessories kit. Place these on the stand. Place the heat pump on these. The heat pump should be far enough from the wall to ensure proper airflow. Insert the nuts and bolts and tighten the heat pump in place. Ensure the level of the heat pump. Next, we will connect the copper pipes. You can easily refer to this pipeline connection diagram on the storage tank. Take a refrigerant line and position it to reach both units. Avoid sharp bends that could restrict flow. Bind both refrigerant lines using the provided tape. Once taped together, position the refrigerant lines to reach both units. Remove the protective caps on the storage tank. Connect the refrigerant lines. Use spanners 22 and 17 to tighten these. Similarly, on the heat pump, remove the protective caps. Connect the refrigerant lines and tighten them using spanners 22 and 17. The refrigerant lines have to be vacuumed with a vacuum pump. Take a spanner 17 and unscrew the inspection connector screw cap of the three port valve. Connect a compound manometer to the inspection connector and tighten it. Connect a vacuum pump to the compound manometer. Turn on the vacuum pump. Open the manifold. The pressure should drop to minus 30 psi. Let the vacuum pump run for 20 to 25 minutes to ensure there are no impurities inside. Afterwards, close the manifold and turn off the vacuum pump. Wait for 10 minutes. 
the pressure should remain at minus 30 PSI. This ensures there is no leak. Use a spanner 18 and open these lids on the side. Use a 5mm Allen key and open the line slightly. Release the vacuum pump connector. Completely open the refrigerant lines. Close all the lids. Tighten it with its respective spanners. Test the connections for leakage by using soap bubbles. Similarly, use soap bubbles to test the connections to the storage tank. After ensuring no leakage, make the electrical connections. Route the cable from the storage tank to the heat pump. Unscrew these screws on the heat pump. Remove this cover. These two are the main supply. These are for the heating coil inside the storage tank. The is for the ground connection. This connects to the sensor from the storage tank. And this connects to the display or the control unit. Open the cover containing the accessories. This is the control unit or operation panel. This is the temperature sensor for the storage tank. 